on Facebook, on YouTube. Click and subscribe and, and drop us a comment or two in there. I pray that this service will be a blessing to you and minister to your spirit. Now, how many know that we serve a God that is our everything? And because he's our everything, he's able to do what he said he's going to do. And because he's able to do that, we have to stand on his word. So stand to your feet. Come on and join along with us as we worship our God in song. Come on, praise team. Let's go. Put your hands together. Come on, let's get a little bass, please. Come on, Kenny. I see you, Ed. All right.
out to the Lord. He is able. And that's why I stand on his word, because I know that in spite of everything that I go through, he's able and he's going to do exactly what he said he'll do. Stand. Ah, come on, let's stand.
Let us pray. Father God, I just thank you this morning. I give you praise. I give you glory. I give you honor. Thank you for this word. Now, God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And it's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. Come on, let's look at the word of God this morning. We're going to go right to the book of Malachi. Malachi. Uh, we're going to begin reading at verse uh, chapter. We're going to begin reading in chapter 3. Uh, at verse 1, and I know for those of you that are familiar with this passage, uh, you know, you probably have jumped ahead of me and went on down to Malachi 3 and 10, but but slow your roll, slow your roll, go ahead and tell your virtual neighbor, slow your roll, uh, that's not what I'm preaching about this morning. There's something else in this text that I saw that, that I want to deliver to you this morning, but let's, let's read verse, uh, these first couple of verses in chapter 3. Uh, it begins with verse 1. It says, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may abide in the day of his coming, and who shall stand when he appear? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord as in the days of old and as in the former years. And I will come near to you to judgment and I will be swift witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers against false, false swears, and against those that oppress the hireling in his wages, the widow and the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger from his right. And fear not me, saith the Lord of hosts, for I am the Lord, I change not. I'll read that one more time. For I am the Lord, I change not, therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. I want to speak to you for just a few moments this morning. I want to take the title of this message from verse 6. And I want to talk about from this t topic, we serve an unchangeable God. We serve an unchangeable God. For I am the Lord. I change not. As I stand before you this morning, and as I've looked at this message and as I wrote a few things here this morning, one of the things that uh, I began to think about is the changing of times. As a matter of fact, if you're with me this morning, you, you're my witness uh, that we are living in an unprecedented time of change. Things are changing so fast that we can hardly keep up. I remember as a little boy and as a young teenager, when a quarter used to buy a phone call in the telephone booth. Now we have to buy a cell phone every two years to replace our outdated ones. And not only that, you pay a very expensive cost because really good cell phones these days can cost you $1,000 or more. Some of you may remember with me when gas was 99 cents a gallon. This summer we saw gas prices explode. Some saw the price reach $5 or more. Handwriting is on the wall. Gas-powered vehicles will eventually be replaced by electric vehicles. Somebody say change. College campuses used to be overflowing with young minds waiting to be inspired. And now most of our young people, our young minds get their degrees online where they can or don't have to share their thoughts with anyone. So much of our life is changing at a rapid pace that when we look the good old days, was just last year. <laughs> Everything is changing. Climate change, technological change, economic change, social change, scientific change, political changes, and these and many more are just leaving us at times breathless. Even what we eat has changed. There's no more time to chop up fresh vegetables or to marinate a piece of meat. Uh, we now reach for the microwave and we eat food that's filled with preservatives. We either order through Grubhub or we go out to eat. Times have changed when we no longer really sit around the dining room table 
for evening meals. Where we live has changed. Many of us have moved from the hood to the burb. Many of us have moved from the country to the city. We no longer want large yards or separation from our neighbors. We are moving to smaller yards or no yard at all. We no longer want to drive to the city or across town. We want the experience of the marketplace, quality of life living within walking distance. How, how we shop has changed. Who would ever thought that we would move away from J.C. Penney's and, and, and Kmart and, and Target and Walmart and be at a place where we are today where Amazon is cornering the market. Any and everything that you want to order, you can find it on Amazon. Not just clothing, but everything. Somebody say everything. Everything. If, if it can fit in their warehouses, which look like small cities, you, you don't have to leave home to shop. Just buy it from Amazon online. And get this, if you're a Prime member, like most of us are, you don't even have to pay for your shipping. How we talk has changed. We used to get together, a lot of us and a lot more people, and, and have time with friends and, and discuss uh, our lives and, and, and build relationships in settings together. We, we would catch up, but now we just send text messages and we don't even type out the whole word. We use uh, alphabets like T-Y, which means thank you. We use O-M-G, oh my God, I-D-K, I don't know, L-O-L, laughing out loud, and so many others that you can think of at this time. Or, or like myself, we have the overuse of emojis. My favorite is the thumbs up. It's a quick conversation piece. When I was growing up, we had to write in cursive. Today, today you just have to know how to use your thumbs. How we work has changed. Uh, as a matter of fact, COVID has helped us over the years in, in, in terms of working in that we have now come to find out that we can have flex schedules where the boss lets you work from home. How we dress has changed. As a little boy growing up in the church, I remember the preachers who wore suits and gaiters. And now we live in a day and time where our preachers, like myself, we wear sneakers and jeans. Even when uh, uh, and where and how we used to worship for so many of us has changed. We, we now enjoy the benefit of online service. We enjoy the benefit of Facebook Live in our pajamas, Bible study on Zoom, or having prayer meetings by conference calls. We may think it's the same, uh, but I, I gotta just let you know that it's not the same because in this many of us have lost, we've lost the benefit of fellowship. Someone once said, the only constant in life is change. But I believe that that person was wrong. There is a constant that does not change, ever. Despite all that is changing all around us, I stand today to reassure you as a pastor in the body of Christ that God never changes. Yes, there's change happening all around us, but I reaffirm to you that from this holy position where I stand that God never changes. As a matter of fact, in our text today, uh, God is, 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 is predicting uh, through the prophet Micah the things that are going to happen in the future. Uh, uh, he predicts that, 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 that for Israel, uh, particularly in this text, that, that there was a judgment that was coming. And he lets the people know that he will purge the nation of those who are involved in sorcery, who are involved in adultery, perjury, depriving uh, workers of their wages, oppressing the widows and orphans, and mistreating aliens. All those who do not fear him, God said he was going to deal with him. He was going to judge. And all of these, because what? They, they were crimes that were prohibited in the Mosaic law. And here, God is speaking through his prophet. However, however God, uh, uh, while he does speak of judgment, uh, there's a God also that, that also at the same time that is a, a merciful God and who remembers his covenant. Because he also tells Malachi here in this text that, that Israel will be delivered in the day of the Lord. Yes, the descendants of Jacob will not be destroyed. This because of God's covenant promise that he had made to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Uh, a promise, though, though, when we look at it, is only as good as the one who made the promise. And I stand here today to tell you that God will keep his promise uh, to us, to you and I, just as he has kept his promise to the nation of Israel. It will not change because his word, like himself, 
is immutable. This, 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 this is the basis for Israel's hope. And like Israel, you and I are part of God's church today. The church that Jesus promised that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And, and as a church like Israel, we have this hope in God because we know this. He never changes. I'll say it again. He is immutable. Uh, uh, and here's some reasons before I get out of here and go home today that I want to let you know why I believe that God never changes. Number one, what, what God yearns for us never changes. You, you can count on that. God desires, according to John 3 and 16, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. You may not want him, but he wants you. And if you perish, that's on you. It's not on him. The Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, but it is written... I have not seen nor, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. The blessings of God that he has in store for you are numerous, so many that you can't even count them. In fact, most of them are invisible to you. He knows what you need even before you ask. My God, God already knows what you're in need of. As a matter of fact, there's a few of you that can testify that, that, that there's that accident that you avoided when you was driving. Driving. God already saw it and, and, and made sure that you were kept safe. Uh, there's, there's that raise that you got that, that was right on time because you didn't know the unexpected financial uh, commitments were on the way. There, there's a storm that you avoided because God took you down a different route. There, there's the issue that the doctor discovered and treated before you ever even knew about it. There, there's that, that mortgage, that house you was trying to get into that God blessed and made a way for you to be able to do it when you knew that your credit score was not good enough. As a matter of fact, there's a few of you with school just starting, uh, your child was able to get that last minute scholarship that you did not know was available. Why? Because God is always looking out for his people. And you ought to just take a moment right there and give God about 30 seconds of praise for the blessings that God has in store for you that you have not even come into yet. Give him an advanced praise. Come on, take about 30 seconds and thank God because God has plans for you and he's not changed his mind about you he's yearning to give you the things that he desires for you and you see God's method of, of reaching us will never change because his love for us will never change he desires a relationship with all of us and it only requires a confession of our faith as a matter of fact I said to you earlier that he sent his only begotten son to open the door of relationship with him that door was open on Calvary's cross and then God God will keep it open throughout eternity. That will never change. And all you have to do, my brothers and sisters, is walk through it. Come on, somebody say, he loves me just that much. He yearns, amen, to bless you. He yearns to be in relationship with you. But not only that, what God requires of us never changes. Once we accept his son as our savior and become one of God's own, the book, the Bible, the ancient book, of his requirements, they will never change. He won't change his rules in midstream to make your journey with him impossible. In other words, God does not move the goalposts. <laughs> his word has never changed, and it will never change. Even if every copy of the Bible is burned to ashes, God's word will never change because it lives in us. 1 Peter 2, 1 and 25 reads, For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord stands forever. As a matter of fact, when Peter quotes verse, this verse, verse 25, he's really quoting from Isaiah 40 and 6 through 8. He's reached all the way back into the Old Testament where Isaiah says, Cry out, I said, what shall I cry? All people are like grass and all their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of God endures forever. Ever. Isaiah's poem here describes a glorious field of flowering grass that quickly withers and dries up. It's a picture of our human existence. 
intense but all too brief. But, but that's not the end of the poem. By, by contrast, the word of the Lord remains forever. I stopped by to tell someone this morning that while we may come and go on this side of eternity, one generation after another, God's truth remains the same throughout all of time. It never changes. Therefore, God, God demands are simple. Uh, uh, Malachi asks, Micah asks, what do the Lord require of thee? And then through the inspiration of God himself, Micah answered the question. Hear, hear the word of the Lord. God demands that we be just. Our lives be lived in such a way that we are fair and impartial in how we share our testimony. There, there, there's no room for prejudice or bias in the house of God. As a matter of fact, Romans 3 and 23 reminds us that, that, that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But God demands that we be merciful. Our lives should be full of compassion and generosity. Those, those, those who watch us should see us as kind-hearted and sympathetic, not, not hateful or full of disdain. His mercy endures forever, and so should ours. We should extend the same mercy that we expect God to extend to us. God demands that we be humble, for it is the meek that shall inherit the earth. We should be known for our modesty, brothers and sisters, our submissiveness to those who are in authority over us, and compliant to the powers that be, according to Romans 13 and 1, because they are ordained of God. God expects us to be gentle to people who draw others to him by our mild-mannered, forgiving and understanding nature. God also demands that our relationship with him includes our faithfulness to his church, not just on Sunday morning, but at prayer meeting, at Bible study. He warns us not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together, and the reason is obvious. His desire is that we shout, but, but when we shout, we know what we're shouting about. God's desire for us will never change. His demand for us will never change. But not only that, what God has promised will never change. James 1 and 17 reads, Whatsoever is good and perfect is the gift coming down to us from God our Father, who created all the lights in heaven. He never changes or casts a shadow or cast a shifting shadow. Go ahead, someone type it in the, in the virtual lines there. Let your neighbor know God is, not, God is not shady. Come on, tell somebody this morning, God is not shady. God is not shady. As a matter of fact, James urged his readers not to be deceived. He understands that emotions and sinful thinking can trick us into turning away from God. Uh, 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 pandemics and endemics can trick us into turning away from God. But, but even in the roughest times of our lives, even in the toughest times of our lives, when we lose loved ones, when we lose relationships, when people walk away, when we lose things, it's important to cling to the truth, which is that every good thing in our lives is a gift from God. In the midst of our trials, I know we are tempted to change our opinion of the trustworthiness of God. We start to make lists of all the things that we think we are missing in our lives, of, of all the things that we think that we have lost. If God were good, we would ask, would, would, he, would he have taken those things away? If God were good, wouldn't we still have all of those things? And, and this attitude, if we're not careful, leads to more temptation. We begin to look elsewhere for good things we think that we are missing. We begin to go elsewhere looking for things that we think that we are missing. We begin to, to turn to people looking for things that we think that we are missing, saying that if God won't provide them, we think, we'll have to go and get them for ourselves. We attempt to take control. We struggle to find our own satisfaction. However, James urges us to flip the typical human script. He calls us to make a new list, all the things that we have. Where did all those good things come from? Come on, look over your life right now, brothers and sisters. Look at what you have. Ask yourself the question, where did all those things come from? As a matter of fact, some of you are spending a little bit of time trying to figure out what good thing God has done for you. As a matter of fact, if you're listening to me this morning, if you're watching me uh, on, on this virtual setting, uh, I'll go ahead and let you know the mere fact that you're watching me means that there's breath in your body. The mere fact that you're watching me means that God woke you up this morning and right there is a good place to give God some praise because there's somebody that didn't get up this 
morning. So if you're looking and trying to figure out good things that have happened to you, just look back a few hours ago. God got you up this morning. It was not your alarm clock. It was not your iPhone. Amen. It was not your Android. It was not your, your, your spouse that elbowed you or woke you up. But you ought to give God some praise and say one of the good things that I can testify right now is that this day, this is the day that the Lord has made. And I know that God has allowed me to see it. Somebody ought to shout. That's a good place to celebrate a good thing. Come on, somebody. Give God some glory on this morning. Say, God, God makes good things happen in our lives. As a matter of fact, James is encouraging the believers in this text in, in Christ to tell themselves the truth. God gave you every single good thing in your life. He is the source of all the good that you have and all the good you crave. Who God is does not change when our circumstances change. He doesn't go from being a good God to a bad God when our trials begin. He is still the source of all the good in our lives. He never changes. Come on, somebody shout. He never changes. And last but not least, what God has prepared for you and I as believers will never change. Jesus said in John 14 and 22, he said, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am there ye may be also. You can believe Jesus. He went all the way to the cross, died, and rose again just to prove that eternal life is real. Eternity is a long time. The Israelites lost sight of that fact. They ignored God's many warnings. When, 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 when prophet after prophet warned them of God's wrath to come, they did not repent. They continued to forsake the old covenant, and many lost their close connection with the Creator. I, I, I read this, 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 this meme, and I reposted it. Some of you may have seen it. That, that the great uh, uh, Tony Evans put out, and he said that many will say, I don't need to go to church to be saved. And, and he goes on to say, that is true. But he makes the point, he says, that, that, that you don't need to go home to prove that you're married. But stay away long enough and see how that affects your relationship. And I know that there's a lot of you under the sound of my voice right now. You have made up in your mind that it's not necessary to go to church all the time. You, you've been convinced that, that you're okay staying at home. But I, I want to remind you, be careful that you don't lose your close connection with God that comes through fellowship with your brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, uh, they, they, because here's what the Bible says. That it says that the people in Malachi's time, they, they ceased to keep God first. And so they gambled away their eternal home. Yes, yes, not everyone deserted the Lord in the days of the old covenant. We know this because John, John records the vision of on the Isle of Patmos that 144,000 from the tribes of Israel were sealed in heaven's throne room there in Revelation chapter 7 and 4. And, 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 and he said that, that, that not only that, but he goes on to say in Revelation 7 and 9, he said that there will be a great multitude of Gentiles who will join them. Listen to what he said. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, my God, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And I don't know about you this morning, my brothers and sisters, but when I think about what God has prepared for me, I have made up in my mind that I am determined to be in the number. Uh, uh, my question for you this morning, that when you think about what God has prepared for you, and that never changes. Have you made up in your mind that you're not going to lose your connection with God? Come what may. The question this morning for you that are under the sound of my voice. Will you be in the number? Are you doing what needs to be done to stay in the number? Are you being faithful to God? Are you being faithful to the kingdom of God? Are you being faithful to God's church? Will you be in the number? Do not be deceived, amen, because God is not mocked. You can't do what you want to do. You can't go where you want to go. As believers, amen, we are committed and submitted to the kingdom of God. And be careful that you don't lose your 
place and that you won't be counted in the number. My question one more time, will you be in the number? God has a place for us and that has not changed. Only you can change that. The question is, will you be in the number? I'm getting ready to get out of here, but my, I, I got to close with this because in this world of constant and ever increasing rapid change, I stopped by this morning to remind you that we can trust God when he says, I am the Lord. I change not. God won't change. He is faithful. I'll say it again. He says, I am the Lord. I change not. God won't change. He is faithful. You're, you're, you're the only one who can gamble away your future. Uh, if you're an unbeliever, allow me to tell you what he has done for me. Uh, 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 since I have come to know the Lord, he is my fountain of joy. Since I have come to know the Lord, he is the bread on my table. Since I have come to know the Lord, I found him to be my source of comfort, the pilot of my ship, the solution to all my problems. He is the object of my worship. He is the wisdom in my decision, and he's my way in the wilderness. I don't know about you, but, but I stand here today to tell you that I found him to be in all of these circumstances, in all of these situations, that he is a God that never changes, that even when I struggle, and came back. I found him to be a God that did not change. He was still a God that was full of mercy. He was still a God that's full of compassion. And I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but I stopped by to tell you that God yearns for you. That, that God, 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 what God requires of you never changes. What, what God yearns for you never changes. What God has promised for you will never change. And I want to let you know finally that what God has prepared for you will never change. I hear here in Numbers 23 and 19 before I get up out of here. It says that God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said it and he will not do it? Hey, or has he spoken it and he will not make it good? Come on, somebody shout that we serve an unchangeable God. He is unchanging. He is an unserved, unchangeable God. He is constant in my life. He is an unchangeable God. He is firm in my life. He is an unchangeable God. He is immovable in my life. He is an, is an unchanged God. He's unmovable in my life. He is an unchanged God. He's irreversible. He's an unchanged God. He's invariable. He's an unchangeable God. He's unvarying. He's an unchangeable God. He's fixed. He's an unchangeable God. He's steady. He's an unchangeable God. He's unyielding. He's an unchangeable God. He's resolved. And come on here, Hebrews 10 and 23, and let's go home, saints, because he said, let us hold unswervingly to this hope we have or that we profess because he who promised is faithful. Come on, wisdom all over this place. If you know that you serve a God who is unchangeable and that if you don't remember nothing else come on say this with me tell your neighbor type it in on the social networks that the God I serve is an unchangeable God God I serve is faithful to the end now for all of you that know he's an unchangeable God for all of you that know that he's a faithful God come on put those hands together come on on the social networks testify come on somebody shout he's unchangeable come on somebody shout God is faithful he has been, he's faithful right now, and he will continue to be. He has been an unchangeable God. He's still unchangeable, and he ain't going to ever change. Now, if you know this unchangeable God, put those hands together and give God your best praise. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah in the living room. Hallelujah in your car outside on the back porch come on give God an unchangeable God praise on this Sunday morning he's worthy to be praised of all the glory of all the honor come on bless the Lord oh my soul because he's what so worthy to be praised hallelujah unchangeable God unchangeable God unchangeable God unchangeable God somebody testify unchangeable God we serve an unchangeable God that does not change with times, with pandemics, with political movements, whether we're rich or poor, sick or healthy, he does not change. And that's why I love him. God is so faithful. And for that on this morning, we honor you, oh God. 
Somebody need to hear, oh God, that you're un- unchangeable, that they're going to a situation where they feel like you've left, oh God, but you've not left because you said in your word you would never leave us nor forsake us. Oh God, somebody's in the midst of something right now, God, a storm, oh God. They don't even know that you're right there with them, oh God. God, God, you got them, you got them. God, they, they're facing challenges in life right now. But, but I need to remind them of your word right now, God, that, 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 that if they'll hold to your unchanging hand, oh God, hold, come on, hold, hold, come on, wherever you are right now, hold to God, hold to God, hold to God. To, I, I don't care how long you've been going through. Hold to God's unchanging hand. I don't, I don't care what it looks like. Hold to God's. I don't care who walks out. Hold to God's. I don't care what you lose. Hold to God. I don't care what the doctor says. Hold to God. I, I don't care what they say on the job. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Somebody pray right now for your neighbor on these social networks. Some, somebody needs to hold to God this morning. Somebody's on the verge of giving up, but I come by to remind you, hold to God's unchanging hand. Come on. He's an unchangeable God. He's an unchangeable God. The same God that loved you yesterday is the same God that loves you today. The same God that promised blessings. You've not received them yet. I want to let you know that he is a God that he will not lie. And if he promised it, he will perform it. God's going to do it. God showed you he's going to do it. Come on, hold on to the promise. Hold on to what God has showed you this morning. Come on, come on, come on, somebody, wherever you are right now, whatever, whatever you slept your way through last night, that, 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 that wanted you to give up this morning, I want to remind you that God, God, God is an unchangeable God. I don't care what they said about you and what, what they have spoken over you. It's about what God has said about you. And God, 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 God has good plans for your life. He's unchanging. God, God, God has an expected future for your life. He's unchanging. And I need to remind you that this unchangeable God still loves you today, just like he did yesterday and last, last weekend and, and last year. This unchangeable God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know they kick you out the club, but you still serve an unchangeable God. I, I know they say you're different, but you still serve an unchangeable God. I, I, I know that there's some folk that will never like you, but you still serve an unchangeable God. And, and what matters is that God does not change in your life. Hold, hold to God's unchanging hand. God, I thank you right now. I pray. I lift up this church right to, to this morning. I lift up this church unto you, oh God. This church has said, oh God, in this word, oh God, that God, we're holding to your Un- unchanging hand. God, God, you're an unchangeable God and word and season ministries and all that are attached to this ministry right now. We're holding on to the promises, oh God. We're holding on to everything that you have for us, oh God. We're not letting go. We're not, we're not slipping back, oh God. God, God, as a matter of fact, I see great things on the horizon, oh God, because God, God, just like you, you promised for things in the days of Malachi that were to come, I know that there are things on the horizon for word and season ministries and for every member that's attached to this body of faith. Because what? You are an unchangeable God. Now, now God, open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings, oh God, on our families, on our, on our men, over our, 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 our women, over our sons and our daughters, oh God. Open up the windows of heaven, oh God. Let your favor be on this ministry, oh God, as you have promised, oh God, because what? You are an unchangeable God, God. I thank you right now, God. I give you praise, glory, and honor on this, this powerful Sunday morning. God, we serve. Come on. Come on, somebody. Type it in one more time before we go. We serve an unchangeable God. If you believe that, amen, come on, let somebody know. We serve an unchangeable God. If you not liked and shared this message, like and share it with somebody. Let them know we serve an unchangeable God. God bless you. Remember, for every season, there is a word in season. Wow, what a powerful service. Thank you guys so much for joining us for our fourth Sunday virtual service. It was awesome and I pray that it impacted your life just as much as it did mine. The word is always so rich here at Word and Season Ministries. So listen, if you did not give, if you did not have an opportunity to connect with us, I will give you an opportunity now to do so. They're gonna place the information on the screen that if you would like to sow into this ministry, to the word that you just received, you can do so. And we would certainly appreciate your partnership here at Word in Season. And listen, we will see you on this Wednesday night for virtual Bible study. You can join us in the sanctuary next Sunday as we will be in person. And you can always join us on any of our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok to find out more 
about what's going on at Word in Season Ministries. Remember, for every season, there is a Word in Season. And don't forget, C3 Living, caring, community, and connections. God bless you.